The future of IMAX films is just around the corner and we have got a new brief interview surrounding what that may look like and the filmmakers heavily involved in making this happen. Christopher Nolan and Jordan Peele are apparently cooperating with IMAX on new cameras and while we learnt about this news a while back, we have some updates surrounding what that may look like alongside the aim for IMAX going forward. There will be a link down in the description below if you want to read the interview yourself, but I'm going to be addressing it and giving you my thoughts on the current updates. But before I get into it, if you want to see more updates and videos on the work of directors like Christopher Nolan, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into the newest updates surrounding the future of IMAX and its next generation film cameras. So after the release of Jordan Peele's Nope and many films by Christopher Nolan in the IMAX format, we've seen the type of scale and image that can be produced by these cameras and we've learnt that more and more filmmakers are dreaming of using this technology to the best of its capability. Nope was the first time that Jordan Peele has used IMAX and after working with Nolan cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoy Temmer, it's clear that Peele is now a fan. He's worked Working with the company in creating next generation IMAX film cameras and most likely he's going to be using the format to tell more stories in the future. And Nolan himself has been on that train since 2008 following The Dark Knight, revolutionising the potential of the big screen format and the breathtaking images we can get from it. Recently, we've had films like Dune Part 2 and The Batman, which have showed that a digital transfer can look great too with the right process involved. And what's clear is that the IMAX format provides a certain level of quality that is unparalleled if used correctly, and many filmmakers want to use it on a big scale going forwards. In a new article with Forbes, we got an update on the process of the next-gen IMAX cameras that Christopher Nolan and Jordan Peele are collaborating on, and in a recent discussion, IMAX's head of post-production, Bruce Marco, discusses the process of making that possible. He said, What we're doing with these new cameras is to engage with some of the filmmakers who have worked with us and shot with our film cameras before, whether that be directors or cinematographers, and we have got their feedback, what they liked, what they didn't like, and how we could improve them. It then goes on to say in the article that one of the things that filmmakers have to get around while using IMAX is that while the IMAX cameras provide an outstanding quality of image, they also are quite heavy and noisy to use. This is why a lot of filmmakers try to keep their dialogue scenes to other formats and IMAX is used for the more action-based sequences of scale. And this is apparently one of the areas that IMAX is focusing on improving, making it more likely for entire films to be shot in the format correctly and making it easier for filmmakers and cinematographers to capture moments using this photography. It also states in the article that from a filmmaking perspective, if IMAX were able to deliver on this, then it would make for IMAX footage that has a different feel. You could use it for more dialogue driven moments, character intimacy, and not just for the big set pieces that filmmakers like Nolan have seamlessly interweaved into their pre previous films. Just imagine The Dark Knight, but the majority of the film captured in IMAX, including scenes like the interrogation one between Batman and the Joker. It would change the game in terms of how these big budget films are put to screen, and it would help towards eliminating what I like to call fake IMAX films that are just transferred into that format, even if they weren't shot with the highest of capabilities. It provides all types of IMAX films the greater opportunity to use the format in 
the correct way because it would be much easier to use throughout the film and it would eliminate much of the central difficulties. And I'm sure that with this advancement there would also be upgrades to the picture quality alongside the different ways it could be used experimentally. I guess we're already seeing new forms of that with the current cameras as Christopher Nolan is shooting Oppenheimer in black and white IMAX photography. But when it comes to the new cameras, in the article, Bruce Marco didn't say what the arrival date for those cameras would be, but he did stress the difficulties in creating them. He also said that they are building four cameras, which will add to the existing eight, already allowing more IMAX productions to simultaneously take place. They would be able to accept two IMAX productions at a given time, meaning more IMAX films released for the audience. So overall, this creates a promising future for IMAX films and ultimately filmmakers. According to Forbes, the production clash of No Time To Die and Tenet made IMAX as a company decide that it was time to develop more cameras. And who better to consult than the filmmakers like Nolan and Peele, who work tirelessly to bring their unique projects to the screen with this huge format. You also get a sense of their commitment to film photography in a world that's becoming entirely digital, and as stated on the article, it's not the cost or difficulty in shooting this way, it's the scheduling. Marco said, It takes a lot longer to make film prints than digital. The workflow and process of completing the movie and making the film prints takes quite a bit of time compared to finishing a movie digitally. Some are literally finished two weeks before they open in a theatre, whereas if you want to make film prints, you have to finish quite a bit sooner, 10 to 12 weeks before release at a minimum. That's hard for some filmmakers. But of course, when understanding his words, having more film cameras means it's a lot more manageable to film and use the full 1431 ratio for where it can be projected. Both Dune Part 2 and Oppenheimer are upcoming films that are likely to incorporate IMAX 143, and after those releases, it seems like we might be seeing more as there will be more cameras to provide those capabilities. We'll have to see, but to me, this sounds like exciting news when it comes to film auteurs like Nolan and Peele, who want to continuously push technology forward at the highest level. In particular, I can't wait to see what Nolan does with black and white IMAX photography in Oppenheimer and how he will eventually adapt to the new cameras following their release. But that was my video on the newest updates surrounding the future of IMAX with its next-gen cameras. Like it was said in the interview, filmmakers like Christopher Nolan and Jordan Peele seem to be working closely with IMAX and on future projects that will incorporate these new cameras, pushing forward what today's technology can do when it comes to filmmaking. I can't wait to see what they will look like in future films, and also what other filmmakers join this list in trying to push the bar with this upcoming technology. But let me know down below in the comment section what your thoughts are towards the future of IMAX, and also whether you think we'll see this in action with Jordan Peele's next film, and with whatever project Christopher Nolan is working on following Oppenheimer. For more updates and content on the work of directors like Christopher Nolan, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.